I love the F4 Phantom, but man, I sure do wish there was a plane with worse engines and less lift that I can play at top tier. Guilty pleasures, that's what the Tornado F3 is. I mean, it isn't the best at going fast, it isn't the best at dogfighting, it isn't even the best at shooting missiles at people. But for some strange reason, I found myself having an odd amount of fun with this plane. There was some level of odd satisfaction that came with every little ding I got from shooting an enemy down. It just scratched some little itch in my brain that said I needed to get kills with this bad plane. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. I mean, I feel like most people have that guilty pleasure plane where you know that it's bad and you really shouldn't be playing it. It just does something that no other plane can do for you. And for me, that plane is the tornado. And uh, hey, I would love for you guys to share your guilty pleasure vehicles in the comments as well. Sure, the best of the best, your MiG-29s and Tomcats, they're fun to play. But these weird niche vehicles, these are what keep us coming back to War Thunder. Does your tech tree look like mine and you need a premium to speed up your grind? GE for War Thunder is the app for you. By completing simple tasks, you can earn free golden eagles. And with my referral, you can even get a little bit extra. All you have to do is download the app with the link in the description down below. In War Thunder, aircraft at top tier are defined by two things. It's missile loadout and how ergonomic it is to fly. Fortunately for us, the Tornado actually has a very good missile loadout. Four AIM-9Ls is nothing to laugh at, even if it isn't the best infrared missile in the game anymore. And four Skyflash super temps are very good. However, considering most people haven't ground out to top tier Britain, for very good reason. You may not know why the Skyflash Super Temp is a great missile. I mean, it has Skyflash in the name, it can't be that good, right? Well, imagine an AIM-7E2 and an AIM-7F had a child. That child would be the Skyflash Super Temp. You trade a little bit of range at those longer ranges, which, I mean, most people aren't even shooting the AIM-7F at 20 kilometers anyway, and instead, you get the sheer speed off the rails of the AIM-7E2. The only downside is that it still uses the original guidance of the Skyflash, which doesn't have inertial guidance to bring the missile in if you accidentally lose the lock at the last second, but this isn't too big of a deal. The only radar missile that I think is better than the Super Temp is the R27ER, but in a joust between yourself and other aircraft that have AIM-7Fs, you're typically likely to come out top because your missile gets there first. But hey, that's enough preaching about the Super Temp. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody can understand that shooting your opponent before they can shoot you is very good for your health. As your secondary missile, you have access to the AIM-9L. This is a long-burning, 30G, all-aspect missile. It was developed directly from the Navy's Sidewinders and improved in every possible way. And currently, it's the standard for what missiles you should have at top tier at this point. If your missiles aren't as good as the AIM-9L, then it's probably below average. And if you're one of the few handful of aircraft that has access to missiles that are better than the AIM-9L, well, you're really well off. But overall, you can't really go wrong with the AIM-9L. Just be extra aware when you're using AIM-9Ls. The number one missile that I've experienced getting team killed by is the AIM-9L. With the larger field of view compared to previous Sidewinders and how long it can stay in the air for, just make sure there's not any potential teammates that these might fly into. And as a last resort, you have the gun. A lot of people told me that the Mauser Burger King 27 was a very good gun, but from my experience, all I've been getting is critical hits. Only having one gun with an average to below average fire rate is not necessarily the greatest thing ever, but hey, it's better than nothing. I would take it over a gun pod any day of the week. In Top Gun Maverick, they said it's not the plane, it's the pilot. And while normally this is just a cringe statement used by people who play minor nations to say that they have the best plane in the game, I think it really embodies the element of the Tornado. In terms of flight performance, the Tornado should not be winning any fights by any means, 
But with how many inexperienced players are populating top tier nowadays with the advent of rank 7 premiums, all it takes is one or two bad turns to end up in a situation where, even though the tornado really shouldn't be winning, sometimes it just has guns on. This one goes out to all my FW190 players. I think it's the roll rate. When you have a roll rate like the tornado does, a lot of times you can be just slippery enough to get in and out of situations that you really shouldn't be in. It may be stupid, but sometimes the best course of action is just rolling left and right so that you don't get turned into tornado soup by high explosive rounds. People love to bring up that the tornado has good energy retention, but like, my brother in Christ, it just doesn't turn. Just like every other top tier jet, though, when you're on like, three minutes of fuel, you can still turn into a UFO and fight people. A lot of times, this entails going vertical, as because you have no fuel left in your tank, you have an unlimited thrust to weight ratio. And it also helps cut your turn rate down by using gravity to your advantage. Plus, with the flaps, this thing is deceptively nimble. Sure, you're still going to have to outskill your opponent, as most aircraft have things they can do to counter this, but all hope isn't lost like most people would lead you to believe. Plus, unlike other swing wing aircraft, the tornado is actually very easy to manage your wing sweep in, because you're going to be in auto all of the time. The only time the tornado does sweep back its wings is right when it's about to rip. So you don't get into awkward situations with the Tomcat, where if you're in auto, you actually become worse at dogfighting. Let's be honest though, you really should stick to hit and run fighting if you can. War Thunder is a game of connection, and the vehicles that we choose to play leave an impression on us. As without these niche vehicles that are not necessarily the best, the game would devolve into the same matches every single game. I love the F-14, the F-16, and the MiG-29 as much as the next person, but speaking personally, if these were the only aircraft that I ever played every single day, I don't think I would be playing War Thunder anymore. And with the recent surge in popularity that War Thunder's seen over the past few years, I think it's safe to say that a good number of people agree on that matter. Through these niche vehicles, we learn skills and experience situations that further us as players and push the boundaries of the game. For me, that aircraft is the Tornado F3. But for you, it could be anything else. From MiGs to Mirages, these aircraft only have meaning if we are the ones who connect with them. So I encourage you to take a step back, look at your tech trees, and think to yourself, what is my aircraft? It doesn't have to be the vehicle you do the best in, or the one that's best for grinding, but what vehicle is best for you?